Welcome to talk further about this with the space journalist Sarah Crudders, who's here in the studio and cross with me because in my introduction I said this put them on a par with America and Russia. You don't think it does? Not in terms of with America. You've got to remember 50 years ago this year, now coming up in July, America landed human beings on the moon. While this is a significant achievement because we've never landed as a human race, a robotic lander on the far side, and there obviously are challenges with that, it is not on par with the significance and the risk of actually sending human beings, landing them to the surface and returning them safely, but it is still significant Let's today. talk about the technology, because it's often said that we have technology in our mobile phones that, that they had back then 50 years ago for the Apollo missions. What, what, what is it that this can tell us about the far side of the moon that we didn't already know? Well, first of all, try throwing your phone. Do you think it will get to the moon? It, the technology... <laughs> and I stole you that really from... are cross, aren't you? <laughs> I, I stole that from Buzz Aldrin because, you know, second human to walk on the moon, that's always an example he gives because he often gets that, you know, our phone's got more power. But it was the innovation. In terms of what we're going to know, we know so little about where we came from, why we exist, what else is out there and where we are heading. So this, the idea is going to the deepest crater on the moon towards the southern pole of the far side of the moon to understand more about the formation of the moon, how it particularly formed, um, with possibly a collision with a young Earth, with a Mars-sized object, and also finding out more about um, the technology that we can actually use to build on this. Because it's, it's not just a science and technology or engineering achievement, it's something which is the next step in China's very ambitious space program. China was languishing under Mao during the Apollo moon landings in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Now they've risen in terms of science and technology and innovation and they are looking at sending human beings to the moon. Perhaps the first woman to walk on the moon will be Chinese. No woman's yet walked on the moon and that will be in the 2030s. So this is another huge engineering and technological step in terms of Chinese innovation and technology and their successes in space. A lot of people tweeting questions about this and one which repeats itself is why does that side of the moon look so different from the one we're familiar with? It's because um, the moon's tidally locked so what's happened is um, when the the earth was formed the earth and the moon formed there was this collision that the, both the earth and the moon are spinning the gravitational pull of force of the earth um, slowed down the rotation of the moon so the the moon spins around its axis at the same rate that it actually orbits around the earth so like you and I are facing each other it's kind of the same situation for us and the moon so the far side that's face and not the dark side that's an album well, I was pick, <laughs> that's, that was my next thing it, it, yeah. it was dark because it was romantic <laughs> and it was unknown but the far side that is exposed to space so um 3.5 billion years ago a billion years after the solar system formed it would have been bombarded with loads of raw material when the the universe was still or well, when the solar system was more active so that's taken the brunt of um, the force of the outer space, outer solar system, whereas the near side faces us. They look completely different, and one's tidally locked with us as well. Now, let's look ahead. Um, many theories that uh, a lunar base is an obvious next stage, and that would be a base for a, another mission to Mars, perhaps. Where, where is space exploration going now? Well, the ultimate goal is to send human beings to Mars, so a, a lunar base... Um, I think we've got, we've got to remember as well, in terms of space exploration, the International Space Station, which is our, our only current base in space, should be given a Nobel Peace Prize in terms of you've got countries which don't get on together on Earth, such as Russia and America, working together. The next goal, once the ISS, the International Space Station, comes to the end of its lifespan, is to have a moon village, as Jan Warner, the head of the European Space Agency, describes it, which would be a base on the moon which would enable us to test out technology before sending humans eventually to the surface of Mars within the next 30, 40 years. That, yeah, we could see a lunar base within the next 30 years, but what we need is collaboration. It's, it's gone of the Apollo days. We can't compare anything with Apollo. But what, we, what we will be seeing is countries working together, which might not get on our Earth. At the moment, China isn't working with the US. That may change in the future, but we're also seeing private industry and private business. So whereas, Columbus was the, or whereas Apollo was the Columbus moment in terms of exploration, we're in the Mayflower moment of exploration now. So we're seeing private industry and ideas and businesses going to space. There's money to be made in terms of mining and data utilisation and ideas that we can't even imagine yet and manufacturing. So a moon base will be an international and also a business collaboration which will enable us to develop technology, explore further out into space, but most importantly, look back at Earth and improve life here on Earth because the reason all of us are going to space, the reason humanity explores space is about us and it's about asking and answering fundamental questions about us as a species and helping to protect planet Earth. Sarah, thank you very much. Sarah thank, you. thank you.